pause the video and try this question before moving on. Based on the description given in the question, we can draw a Norman window as follows right here. And then what we can do is add some labels to the drawing. We will let x equal the radius of the semicircle and y equal the length of the rectangular portion of the window. With those labels, we can add some additional labels to the diagram. The left side of the rectangle would of course be labeled y, just like the right side. The entire width of the rectangle could be labeled 2x, since half of the width was labeled x. And then it turns out we can label the semicircle with pi x, but let's explain that. Recall that when you have a full circle, the length or circumference around the circle is given by 2 pi times the radius. Now since our radius has been labeled x on the diagram, the circumference would be given by 2 pi x. But since we only want half of a circumference, because the window, the top portion of the window is a semicircle, we can cut 2 pi x in half, and that's going to just give us 1 pi x, or pi x. So that gives us the length around the top circular edge of the Norman window. So we can now easily set up an expression for the perimeter, since the perimeter is just the sum of the lengths around the outside edges of the figure. So we would have y plus 2x plus another y plus the pi x. That would give us the perimeter, so let's write that out. Of course, we can add the y plus y to make 2y. We can also substitute the value of 30 into this equation because the question states that the perimeter of the window is 30 feet. So we'll plug 30 in for p. Now this equation turns out to be what we call a constraint equation but because we are constrained by the fact that the perimeter must be fixed at 30. What we'll do next is solve this equation for y and then we'll see why that's useful later. So why don't we go ahead and subtract 2x and pi x from both sides, and then we can divide both sides by 2 to isolate y. We could leave this expression for y as is, but we could also simplify it by dividing the 30 by 2, the 2x by 2, and then the pi x by 2 as well. So we have this expression for y. It turns out this will be useful to us later, so let's go ahead and hold on to it. And the next aspect of the problem is to consider how we can determine the greatest possible amount of light that's being admitted. Well, when they say the greatest possible amount of light that's being admitted, what they mean is that they want the area of this entire window to be maximized. That should make sense, because if you want to let a lot of light in, you want the area of this window to be as large as possible. So we need an equation for the area of the entire window. And we can see, of course, the window was made up of a rectangle and a semicircle. And we know the area of a rectangle is base times height. So we can begin to set up the area as follows. And then we also note that we have a semicircle. Now the area of a full circle is pi r squared. We only want half of a full circle. So it's going to be pi r squared divided by 2. The base of our rectangle has been labeled as 2x, and the height has been labeled as y. So we're going to substitute in 2x here for the base and y here for the height. And then the radius of the semicircle was labeled as x, so we'll substitute x in for the radius. So with those substitutions, we would have the following. So here is the equation that we're going to try to maximize. The problem with the equation is that it has two variables. We have x and y. And the strategy here will be to make a substitution so that we can get the equation in terms of just one variable. That's where this other equation comes in handy. Remember, we isolated y, so what we can do is plug in 15 minus x minus pi x over 2 in for y into this equation, and then that will give us the area in terms of a single variable. So we'll go ahead and make that substitution. And now why don't we simplify this a bit by distributing the 2x to all three terms inside the parentheses here. Notice for the third term here, we have 2x pi x over 2. Those 2s can cancel, and we can combine the x times x to make x squared. And then we have some like terms here. We have a negative 1 pi x squared and a positive, essentially, 1 half pi x squared. So negative 1 plus a half is going to be negative a half. So these two terms can be combined into negative 1 half pi x squared. And now, nicely, we have the area in terms of just a single variable, x. And now, why don't we also clean up the workspace? So, of course, the next step in optimizing the area here is to calculate the derivative of this area equation. So we're going to have a prime, and then the derivative of 30x will just be 30. We can use a power rule for the second term. So we're going to have minus 4x, and then another power rule, multiply the half times 2 to just get 1. So that becomes pi x. 
Next, we can set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x. And so maybe the best way to do that is to add these two x terms over to the other side. Since both terms have an x, we can factor it out as a greatest common factor. And then we can divide both sides of this equation by 4 plus pi, and that's going to give us our value for x. And this happens to be approximately 4.2. To confirm that this value of x actually maximizes the area of the window, we have to use the first derivative test. So let's do that next. We've plotted the x value right here in the middle of a number line. All we need to do is choose a value of x that's less than that number. So we could perhaps just choose 4 and then choose a value that's a little bit larger than that number. And so maybe we'll choose 5. We'll plug them into the first derivative, which we've recopied right here. And when we do that, we're going to find that the first derivative, when we plug 4 in, is positive. And so what happens is the function, the area function, would be increasing. When we plug 5 into the first derivative, we discover that the derivative is negative. So that means the area function is decreasing. And so right at our critical number, this 30 divided by 4 plus pi, we would have a maximum value. So indeed, this value of x will maximize the area of the window. So we have the x dimension, but we also need to find out the y dimension as well. Actually, if we go back to the picture, we note that x was only half of the width of the rectangle. It's probably more convenient to get the full width of the rectangle. The full width of the rectangle would be twice x. So it's probably a good idea to actually go ahead and multiply the x by 2 so that we have a nice dimension of the entire width of the rectangle. Now, of course, when we multiply this quantity by 2, the numerator just becomes 60. So let's go ahead and do that. So there we have the full width of the rectangular part of the window. Again, we still need to find the length of the rectangular part of the window, which is the y value. So all we're going to do is substitute our x into this equation for y. So that's our final step. So here's the y value. It's a little bit nasty, so maybe we can simplify it. And maybe one step in doing that is to take this 4 plus pi and just push it down to the denominator here. That's a little bit of a fraction shortcut that we can take. And then we'll need to find a common denominator by multiplying this by 2 on the bottom and on the top. And then this denominator needs the full 2 times 4 plus pi on the bottom and also on the top. Let's distribute this 2 to both of those terms. And then we can also distribute the 15 to the terms. In the numerator, the positive and negative 30 pi's cancel, and then 120 minus 60 is just 60. And then here, 60 divided by 2 is just 30. So the final simplified y value, which is the length of the rectangular part of the window, is 30 over 4 plus pi. So there's your length, and then we had the width previously circled over here.